The world, as you know, is changing. And during these hard times, times of tribulation, times of heartache, times of betrayals, lies, and deception, we all must remember what it truly means to be human. And that is to really look and truly embrace one another. Because we're all in this together, each and every one of us, from black to white, from young to old, we are experiencing this thing called life. It is faith in believing that one day, one day, we will live a life of peace and prosperity. That it's one day, one day, a dream will be fulfilled. And the only thing we can do is have faith and take action to allow that one day to become possible. Hi, my name is Andre Jones. We here at Octavia Social Media Strategies stand with the brave individuals standing for peace, justice, and equality, and making sure our voices are heard. And we want you to know that we support you. Please remember, your words have power. Let's remember not to let our emotions get ahead of us and cloud the message that we want to say. Together, we can overcome any obstacle, no matter the size. We shall overcome. Hey everyone, thanks for uh, joining Filmspiration. If you haven't done so, please hit that subscribe button as well as that little bell. That way you're notified next time I make a new video. Um, so I've got the gentleman from Octavia Social Media Strategies here. Um, gentlemen, so let's talk about the Black Lives Matter video, Garen, from the, the content that you took the day at the Dunbar Pavilion. Um, right. Talk to me about that video, how it came about. It was powerful, and frankly, it was it was the one, Garen, that you showed me that I, I'm like, I want to talk to you guys, you know, doing this on camera. Um, oh, so, so, yeah, go ahead. Thank you so much. Because, um, yeah, it was funny meeting you there. That was, <laughs> that was the trip in itself. But our movement is something that is so important, especially for our Black community, and it's it's just we need to show more support for you know black lives and i know there's a lot of pushback by certain people saying all lives matter and me and edgar and and robert linden we all had that conversation uh a while ago now i'm sure you'll you can find on uh edgar's uh was it webcast as well and the black lives matter is like i said so important and seeing all of the individuals there on just for one, it's such a simple concept, and I don't understand why it's so hard for people to grasp it. But when you see the pictures, and when you see the people in unison saying, yes, things need to change, what we're doing is not our best, and we need to respect people first and foremost, I, I don't understand why that's so hard. And you can tell by the crowds that are gathered saw all those people I saw I saw a lot of frustrated you know frustrated people saying it's like this is so easy to grasp and I also see a lot of folks that are like I'm hopeful because I see a lot of white faces brown faces black faces all united for the exact same cause and this is what America is all about so and at the same time a majority of us I think like 98% of us were wearing face masks. Wasn't that difficult? Wasn't that hard? That's what the Black Lives Matter movement is all about. And with the death, the recent death of John Lewis, um, he bridged the gap between, he is our bridge between the civil rights movement and the Black Lives Matter movement. So anybody that has any problem with Black Lives Matter now, because I hear a lot of folks talking politics about this, saying this is a Marxist, you know, uh, organization, and there's a bunch of stuff going on. It's like, for real? Now, if it was good enough for John Lewis, a real American hero now, somebody that put his life on the line to yeah. make sure I could vote, to make sure I had equality, to make sure I had fair housing, to make sure I had a decent wage. If this is Marxism, are you kidding me? This is American. This is all American. And protesting is an American deal. America was founded on the whole premise of protest. So to try to silence people's voices, it's all political. I'm glad that the black lives that it deserves. I'm shocked that it still lasted this long. 
And I'm so proud that I myself have spoken at a Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, uh, uh, protest. And it was beautiful to see all the faces there. But what I wanted to do was go to the event that happened at the Dunbar and show people that these are people. They're not libtards. They're not, you know, Antifa type sympathize. They're not all these labels that they like to throw on people like us. That's not what we saw. We saw humans with real concern, genuine concern for humanity. And that's what we're about. And with Octavia's social media strategy, that's what we're about, humanity. And we love people. Like Andre said earlier, we're a company about love. That's what brings us together. That's what we want to display. And on camera, we had and speak to the people that are trying to speak, you know, to the government and speak to others to let them know that what we're doing, it's a positive deal. What we're doing is righteous. And uh, I'm telling you, when I made that video, it, it spoke volumes to me because I used a uh, voiceover from Andre, who was in the moment. He drew everything I think that needed to be said in that maybe 30 seconds or whatnot, talking about the dreams that we had. And someday, someday, you know, we'll be better. And it was just so wonderful on the images that came together. And that's what you saw, I'm sure, Edgar, is that the message came through loud and clear. And that's what a good storyteller is all about. With, with regards yeah. to the messaging of that storytelling, uh, from, from a content creation aspect, gentlemen, how important is it to get good messaging out there with regards to the Black Lives Matter movement? Because, um, Garen, as you pointed out, so many misconceptions, um, so many malicious misconceptions, but we also have the power of putting our narratives out there. We also have the power of, of basically um, telling our own story. So, so talk to me a little bit about that, about, about doing the narrative justice by, by framing it co uh, correctly and justly through the power of video. One I of the things that I, yeah, one of the things that, that actually happened when I when I told uh, uh, Garrett we will be doing a video, kind of that's that's usually my words I use. We will be, or you will be, or yes, you are going to. That's yeah. basically how I speak. <laughs> um, so one of the things I said, I'm like, okay, we are going to be doing a video. You're going to record it, and actually, uh, we had George Floyd happen, and then also one of my favorite professor wrestlers in Japan. She committed suicide. And it was actually really, really devastating for me to hear that she had committed suicide in her life. And the reason why she committed suicide was because of bullying. She got bullied because of the character that she was portraying on TV. And the people did not like how she was portraying. They thought she was this bad person. When actually, in reality, it was just her producer told her, you need to do this so that way we can get better ratings. And so she did it oh, wow. and, it's, and they got better ratings. Yes. But however, she got punished by people bullying her. She was in Japan, like I said, and she was bullied for being half Indonesian and half Japanese. So growing up, she was bullied because she was mixed. She wasn't full Japanese. What was when her she was in pro name? rest? It was Hana Kimura is her name. Okay. And so she gets bullied for that. And then, and she, because she's very stocky and very muscular. She has the frame of a professional wrestler, basically. And she even said it was hard to find love because of how she stands out, how she looks. But regardless, she got bullied, bullied, bullied until the night before she passed away. She sent a message on Instagram saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so weak. Thank you, mother, for your love. And now goodbye. And then next morning, she's found dead. So I was devastated by that, by the power, the words that people were saying. And I, what I was seeing was I was seeing people just, just start using social media to express their anger and their frustration. And they didn't care who they target. I mean, the people who I actually looked up to were targeting people who generally would know better not to do so were targeting people. 
and what I was reading and, you know, so when you read post, we can feel the emotion on the other side. And we know that you're yelling and you may not be yelling at us, but you're yelling and you're not, if you're yelling and you're, you're coming from a place of anger, your point will not come across. And so I, I, when I was thinking about what I wanted to say in that video, when I said that our words have power, I was actually talking more to the fact that we need to be more responsible for what we're saying and not just mindlessly start typing something and expect it to have some sort of result or revolution. No, it's actually, you got to put your thoughts behind it. I actually did not post a lot of things or anything or didn't say anything about George Floyd, about Hana Kimura, about anything. Because quite frankly, every time I would start, I would feel my anger rise. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to come from that place. I'm not going to do that to people. I'm not going to punish other people for the anger that I'm feeling for the world because that's my problem, not anyone else's. Andre, um, so, does yeah. that, so what I'm hearing there is that it's not only about the, the thoughtfulness that goes into and behind the words of what we want to say, but from what I've seen in my time yeah. as a member of the media, it's also about how we want to say it. Because the how exactly. can also have a, a tremendous effect, a powerful effect. Yeah, absolutely. You may get an impact that you don't want. <laughs> you, you may get a backlash that actually affects you. And as a business owner, um, I'm very cautious about what I say and what I don't say. And when I speak, what I don't speak. Because I know it's going to reflect back on me. It's going to reflect back on my team. And my model and my mission of life is, and our Octavia is enjoy life. So I told, um, told G, hey, man, we're going to create this. These are the words I want to say. You know, we love and support those who are protesting. We love and support those who are giving their voice and saying their voice. But remember, your words have power. Yeah. Use it responsibly. You know, in spider ability. The most powerful tool you have is your is your basically right here is your voice and how you use it and way you want to say it and what you want to say you got to put your thought behind it so that was really the point of the video is making sure that people knew that we were standing with black lives matter however we believe in the most peaceful way of doing it it's the peaceful protest that wins in the end Absolutely. and i think it was um super effective garen i was i was literally standing by you when you were getting those shots of very powerful images of so many people that day at the Dunbar Pavilion. Um, and it was effective. It was effective because it really, it was, it was peaceful. It was beautiful. It was emotional. It had that emotional effect. And um, um, that I, I wanted to talk to you guys, you know, on the basis of, you know, that where Garen, I told you, Hey, how about we talk and we do the series of interviews. Um, it it um it really really it really really helped frame the the sentiment you know the peaceful sentiment that I took away afterwards from watching the video you guys but that that's just my two cents on it what was the community's reaction to the video that's actually a good question so one of the things I don't do <laughs> is after I do a video. I actually give it to my assistant Eileen to look it over. So she's the one who approves any video that I do because I actually don't like to see myself on video. I, I, I really don't. Um, G makes me look like a hundred million dollars. I know he does, maybe even more. Um, he could probably rebuild me, the million dollar man, you know, rebuild me. Um, <laughs> however, from what I, when my, when Eileen saw it, my assistant saw it, she, she loved it. I showed my daughter and her friends and they crowded around that, that phone when I showed it to her and they just, they just didn't talk. They didn't think they were just totally a mess by it. The people who have seen it have really, really loved the video. They say it's one of the best one I've done. I've seen it, <laughs> but I have no, no reaction to it. Cause I'm like, ah, I could have done this better. Could have done that better. But yeah. I felt as if from my point of view, my, in my two cents that my message came through and from, from hearing from you and from others, 
it feels like it's definitely came through. Garen, have you showed it more so? And what was their response? Uh, basically the same. That's it, it, very powerful. Very powerful. That's the main, that's the first word that mostly comes out of people's mouths. Powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's when you know it's effective. So we yeah. didn't just present something for your eyes. It wasn't eye candy. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was from the heart. And people know yeah. genuine people. You yeah. can come off phony. People recognize that. But this, this was the real deal. This was from the heart. And it had the message that we wanted to convey. And I just want to say, Garen was very patient with me because, and it was interesting. As we were doing the film, I, I was more or less just like trapped. And I was battling the anger, the frustration, the heartache, the why and everything else. I was battling that versus the message I want to portray. And I was so glad that he was able to like really help me pull that part out and keep everything else at bay. So that way it stays as a peaceful, a peaceful message. That, that's got to be challenging to, and, and I can kind of speak to this from the news angle, but to be able to separate um, yourself, the human enough from yourself, the professional, to be able mm -hmm. to execute on a good message with strong images, um, with a strong message. Um, how, how important is it that, that, um, that people of color, uh, in this case, Black Lives Matter, um, keep on, uh, not, not controlling, but keep on, keep on holding the reins to that messaging because there's so much power in, in doing so, in editing your own videos, shooting the images sure. versus leaving it to somebody else. The goal really is to control our own narrative, really, honestly. The goal is to really make sure that we're controlling the narrative of how African Americans, really, honestly, all minorities need to control their, not need, um, all minorities should, uh, not even a should, all minorities, if they want to speak out, could really control the narrative. And what I mean by that is controlling the narrative is that making sure no one else is writing your story. No one else is saying what's happening in your world. You know, I'm a sociologist. And, you know, when I was in going to school for sociology and then right after that, um, I had way too many instances where a, 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 someone who is not African-American was writing about my narrative. And it's like, no, you don't know my narrative. You don't know that this black man is different than Garen's definition of black man versus someone else's definition of black man. I'm a totally different black man. I'm a SpongeBob of black man, really. I cry a lot. I think everything is rainbows and unicorns. Uh, I believe that I can create anything. I look at life like a sponge, really. I soak everything in and there's really no bad days in my life. And I'm very, very vulnerable and happy to be vulnerable because that's where I get my strength and my superpower from. This is a different black man than any other black man, but that doesn't mean just because you hear my narrative that you know all black men. Yeah, like that's, that's not the case. Every black man has a definite definition of what their black man is. So the goal really, especially right now during the Black Lives Matter is to maintain that control of our black, of our, of our narrative and not let anyone else write that. There's, there's way too many instances. For example, I'll pick on like, like, I'll pick on BET because it's something to pick on right there. Who's controlling that narrative there is unknown. It's really just a big, big corporation that knows how to make its money. And that makes sense. It knows how it makes its money based upon the stereotypes of what maybe African Americans are going through and, in, and then producing it. Right. I look at what my daughter and her friends are watching on TV or listening to on the radio on basically how what a black man is. It's like, well, this is false because this is all made up. This is not real. This is not a real. I'm like, child, I am your real black man. Exactly. <laughs> Aaron is your real black man. There's so many other real black men who actually have no tattoos all over their face or anything else in that nature, who actually want to see the positivity of life, not knocking who they are and what they're doing. It's just, right. you got to see the full perspective and the full range of what black man looks like, because it's actually a very, very wide range. So as long as we're controlling that narrative and not letting any other, anyone else control it, now we are 
portraying and tell the story of what it is. You know, Edgar, one of the things that Black men don't get a lot from is acknowledgement from Black women. And then Black women don't get a lot of acknowledgement from Black men. And what I mean by acknowledgement is not like a thank you, because a thank you is thank you for your action. And acknowledgement is acknowledging for you as a human being. Like that is missing wow. in our culture and all that we do. We, we don't acknowledge ourselves. We don't acknowledge others. Instead, we're looking for someone else to acknowledge us, but it actually starts within our narrative. The only way that we can get to acknowledgement is to understand our scope, not just for, from the uh, perspective on the outside, but from perspective of inside and really begin to relearn what it is to be a black man. And, and Garen, with regards to you physically holding the camera, you putting the images together, um, with Andre, your, your narration, you can now put that narrative form and shape and mold that narrative as you guys see fit. We have been, we, we have been bestowed with, those, uh, with the technological abilities mm -hmm. to do so as long as we want to put in the work. Um, <clears throat> let's, right. let's go backward a bunch of years to where, for example, in my case as a Mexican American, I remember the days in the early 90s when uh, the only images that I ever remember seeing in popular media and popular culture of Mexican Americans were blood in, blood out, um, American me. And, right. and mm -hmm. I look back on blood in, blood out specifically, and I think I have family from East LA, but I'm just like, that's not everyone there. And, uh, and then on top of that, um, why does that have to be the only narrative out there that that kind of mm -hmm. is even connected to or that I'm connected to and so when there was when those technological abilities of having a camera an editing system and an internet connection to then upload and distribute and share to before that was ever there that's what we were up against is mm -hmm. that lack of control but um Garen talk to me a little bit about you know um your your, your aim in putting out the narrative and, and, and how beautiful of a thing that is to be able to have that power literally within your hands at, on, on a mouse and a keyboard. It's beautiful to have that. But I, you know, I find kind of distressing and it's kind of sad and Edgar, uh, we, we touched on this, is that the people and this, it go being able to, to own that narrative. When we were at the Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, function, there were certain people there that when I was filming them and they were in the moment, we're talking about genuine spirituality coming out, but they were so fearful for what their message was gonna be portrayed by people who were gonna write their narratives for them, that they didn't choose to, to even deal with us. For one, they didn't want us to use, let's say certain images of them. Yeah. And they said, you got that picture of me doing that? Okay, don't use that. Yeah. So what they're doing is killing their voice for one. And mm -hmm. I'm seeing them. I love to capture people in the moment because oh, that's when yeah. you know the most genuine it is out there. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not playing, you know, with you. It's not phony. It's real yeah. and real emotions sell and real emotion is relatable. And I want people to relate to this message and they kill their message. Yeah. And that hurts me yes. when, they didn't take charge of their own narrative because they saw you as a threat rather than a tool. And they could say, you know what? Yeah, I'm here. Here, story. She has a story. He has a story. Everybody has stories. But we, had, we gave you an opportunity to tell your story yeah. and you killed it. Uh, I, I, know, I know a lot about that, Garen, because um, as the cameraman of of uh, the NBC News affiliate here in town, KBOA, a lot of times um, there's a clash of what I call the clash of concepts. Person like the other, the other folks that you mentioned, you caught in the moment, a very spiritual moment, very real organic human moments. They've got their concept of what it is that, um, you know, either yourself or, or me, Garen, with the cameras, they've got their concept of what it is that they think that we are up to and then there's what we're actually up to, but it's, it's that clash of concepts and the lack of even wanting to ask like, Hey, what are you putting together? Um, you know, how can I help or, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, um, you know, and so when, 
when the walls and and I'm going to use the word walls um, are up so hard and so strong because of the clash of concepts, then um, that that really does, as as you say, Garen, that really does basically kill off an opportunity for what could have been a good message or a good moment to be um, further propagated, for, for further promoted mm -hmm. as you put those mm -hmm. images beautifully together. And so that's where, that's where I've received a lot of aggression. It's when people can calm down and it has happened a lot of times too, when people calm down or, or just take a moment and hear me out and say, look, this is, this is right. what I'm doing. And I've been accused of, no, you're trying to do this. And, and I'm just like, right. no, no, no. Like mm -hmm. this is, this is the story that I'm trying to tell. And then it's afterwards when those walls come down, people give me a chance. They see the final product. In my case, the content being a news story. Then they, they, they have this moment of, oh, okay. I, I get it now, you know? Um, and then, so, but anyway, just th that was a tangent with regards to the clash of concepts, but um, it's all true, when, though. When, when yeah, it's very true. And and when 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 you're able to then move forward in Garen as you did, in in gathering those images to then put together that beautiful video that you guys did, look at the look at the result. You guys it told a very beautiful narrative, in my opinion. Yeah. In what was it like? Thirty seconds, fifty seconds, and. Uh, Somewhere like either that, maybe I, I think a minute, 11 minute, seconds. Like yeah, that. it was and very quick, very, and, very quick. But in that very quick time, gentlemen, congrats, because the sentiment came through. Yeah. The feeling came through. And, yeah. and, you know, because you guys move forward with the video and whatnot. In my case, the news right. story comes through, you know what I mean? But it still happened yeah. and still told the story of, of what happens on the news. Um, yeah. But I mean, you know, when, when you move forward with, uh, again, uh, taking charge of telling, telling your narrative. I mean, it, yeah. that's a beautiful thing with a lot of power. Right. Yeah. Nobody is going to tell your story but you. No. And when you have an opportunity, it's so important to take that opportunity to speak on. It. Yeah. I mean, yeah, some people are, I mean, and cutting words or giving mm -hmm. certain half truths, you know what I mean? And yeah, that does happen. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have an opportunity to voice, give your opinion, give mm -hmm. your voice, give your authenticity. Yeah, I agree. And when you don't do it, that's a wasted opportunity. Gary. And one of the things, Edgar, is that uh -huh. people don't like to be uncomfortable. It's it's generally when you you when you are uncomfortable is when that's where you're growing. That's where the growth wow. is happening. Yep. That's where you are beginning to oh, yeah. to express yourself in a very authentic and vulnerable way, and and also consider that no one likes to be vulnerable. You know, yeah. it's like no vulnerable, vulnerable, super yeah. uncomfortable expressing um, what uh, um, what Gary was doing. You know, whatnot. However, the message was more important than my uncomfortability. Gentlemen, any final closing thoughts on the Black Lives Matter video that Octavia Social Media Strategies uh, put together? It was a beautiful video, great messaging in such a short amount of time, and it left. Um, it, <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I'm trying to not get choked up and just even remembering. It it left a great impression. It it leaves an impression. Anything else you guys would like to add on it? I just want to quickly say that. We also had to use this as a tool for the messages that were out there, especially with uh, regards to the right wing posting, let's say, black faces saying their narratives for them. So that, you know, let's say um, I would see certain, certain right wing voices, black conservatives, for instance, that were saying certain ideals and ideologies and things that were like, holy cow, I can't believe you're actually saying this about what's going on. Like racism doesn't exist. Are you kidding me? Why would you say something like that? We need our message to be the truth, to be out there, to say, hey, no, this is what's really going on. So to offer ourselves is saying, hey, we're, we're telling you what's going on. They see black men telling the truth and they're seeing a community actually speaking about what's going on in their community. People need to see that. So I was proud to actually be able to put that out.
And as a father of a, um, a child who's half black and half white, I truly believe that deep down that we can all work together. Call me crazy or for, you know, in a comic book reference of Professor Xavier, I still believe that humanity can work together. And this video is, is one of those, one, one of many more videos that we're going to do to keep pushing that ideology that look, look together are going to make this life work that we can make any dream come true for anybody. And you never know who your next inspiration is gonna come from and who you're going to inspire next. Mm -hmm. So it's, this movement is, is even more deeply than just a Black Lives Movement movement or Black Lives Movement, that's the Black Lives Matter movement. It is the movement to a new type of humanity where we can all, we don't have to like each other. I am not asking for that. I don't want us to, you know, we don't all have to go out and have burgers together and beer together and think we're great. Also, I would be horrible for that because I don't drink. So that wouldn't work for me. <laughs> However, I do believe that we can actually get to know one each other, one another and get to know each other's story. And the beautiful part is we can be writing stories and telling stories about our lives to, to literally the end of the world because we all have a story. But wouldn't it be amazing to create an authentic space where there's nothing there but just listening ears to hear all the stories? That is what we're creating.